Hi, everybody, and welcome to a recorded version of the Praxis Funding and Internship Credit Information Session. Um, if you missed our in-person session, this is uh, uh, all the same content just uh, recorded for you for our YouTube channel. Um, I, my name is Emily Beaudry. I'm the Internship Coordinator at the Lazarus Center for Career Development. Um, and the other face you see on the screen is Kimberly LeBron. She is our Internship Assistant. Um, and we are your team at the Lazarus Center to help you move through the process of applying for Praxis funding or internship credit or both together. So um, please get in touch with us if you have any questions. Uh, so jumping right in, um, the agenda for this session is to go over Praxis internship funding and internship credit sort of separately so you can understand both. Um, first, I'm going to talk about Praxis internship funding and overview, a little bit about student eligibility and qualifying internships, and then we'll take you through the Praxis timeline from application all the way through to the end of your internship. Um, and we're going to do kind of the same thing for internship credit. We'll give you an overview of that program and those requirements and then go through the timeline of applying for, for internship credit. Um, and we will talk a little bit about what the application for internship support is like. Um, that is what that's the name we give to the um, application, no matter what type of application uh, you're looking for. It's all in the same system. Um, and then finally, a few ways to connect with the Lazarus Center if you have any questions, no matter where you are in this process. So getting started, um, first uh, to talk about the Praxis Internship Funding Program, um, an overview of what this means for those of you who aren't aware of it yet. Um, this is um, college provided funding for unpaid summer internships. Um, this summer, the stipend amounts are 3,500 for internships in the United States or in one's home country and $4,500 for um, non-US and not in one, one's home country. Um, overall, for, for an internship to qualify for Praxis funding, it needs to be unpaid. Uh, it needs to consist of at least 220 hours over the course of at least five and a half weeks. Um, your schedule is completely up to you. Um, we mu uh, your internship must provide you with substantial learning opportunities, and it must be really well supervised by a person with relevant expertise in, in that field. But getting into a few more details of this, let's talk about student eligibility first, because Praxis is all about lining up a student's eligibility with a qualifying internship. Um, students who are eligible for Praxis. Uh, first, you may not have used Praxis funding previously. Um, there's a little bit of an exception to that I'll talk about in just a minute. But in general, uh, the class years who are using Praxis are rising juniors and rising seniors. Um, first years, you can absolutely apply. Uh, there's just a little bit of an extra explanation your, your liberal arts advisor has to give us on their supporting form, which I'll talk about a little, a little bit more later. Um, and graduated seniors are not eligible. So you need to be returning to Smith in the semester following your Praxis funded internship to qualify. You cannot combine Praxis with other Smith College funding for this same internship experience. Um, some examples are international experience grants or Bloomberg fellowships. Um, any funds you do receive for the same um, experience are going to be deducted from your total Praxis stipend. Um, there's a few exceptions to this. Um, in the government department, there's a couple funds we are allowed to uh, combine with Praxis funding, so feel free to check out their website and email us uh, if you have any questions about those. Um, but it's important to note on this one that um, it's truly just if you get the funding for uh, the same experience. So if you get an international experience for one thing this summer and then you want to use a uh, Praxis statement for a totally different thing, that is okay. Um, you're also not eligible for Praxis if, if you've previously participated in the same internship. The whole idea is to get students out um, experiencing new things. Um, and there are some minimum credit requirements that apply um, to be eligible for Praxis. Um, these are all on the website and in the application. Um, you have to have a certain number of, of credits anticipated by the end of the spring semester. And if you don't, we just ask that you um, get in touch with your class dean and that they um, talk to you a little bit about what your plan to make up those credits. So as I may have mentioned, Praxis can be used just once during your time at Smith. Um, the only exception to this is something called Praxis Plus. Um, so Praxis Plus um, is an option for students in the concentrations to receive a second Praxis stipend if they need it. Um, Praxis Plus applicants must have a declared concentration in order to qualify for this. Um, and you must have previously used a Praxis stipend to support a first internship that was also associated with that concentration. Um, and so as part of applying for Praxis Plus in our system, it requires one additional form uh, where your concentration director actually um, confirms your eligibility for Praxis Plus. So um, what kinds of internships qualify for Praxis funding? Um, 
all kinds of internships. We see all kinds of things come through our office, but here are the general rules to follow um, as, you're, as you're seeking internships for this summer. Um, I already uh, mentioned that internships have to be at least 220 hours for at least five and a half weeks. Um, that's to make sure that students don't try to work more than 40 hours a week. Um, but your, your schedule with your supervisor is completely up to you. Um, and, and you can kind of negotiate that however you need to. Your internship has to take place over the summer break and not during the academic term. Your internship needs to co connect to your overall educational goals, but it doesn't necessarily have to connect to your major. Um, that's in the spirit of liberal arts. You can, you can go and experience whatever you want to this summer. Um, your internship needs to provide you with substantial learning and career exploration opportunities. Um, we need to see that it's a, a practical experience and not a theoretical one. Um, your internship needs to support the work of an organization. Um, we can't fund independent projects or senior theses or anything like that. Um, another important piece is that other interns in the organization or the division or the department may not be paid. Um, so if everyone else at the organization is being paid, that would not qualify for Praxis funding. On the application, we also look uh, to, to ensure that your internship is also really well supervised and that you're getting um, that kind of guide that's all, all throughout the summer for your internship. Um, so it needs to be supervised by a permanent paid staff member with that relevant expertise to give you that learning experience. Um, and, and as part of that supervision, um, it requires meeting with them at least once a week. So just to go over a few types of internships that don't qualify for Praxis funding, um, we can't fund any internships that are affiliated with Smith College or that take place at Smith College. You have to, you have to go away from Smith for this experience. Um, you can't get practice funding for an internship that's hosted by a member of your family. Um, you cannot uh, use practice for any hours that take place during the academic semester. The internship does have to take place within the summer break. Um, you cannot split a practice stipend between multiple internships. All those 220 hours need to take place within the same organization. Um, and then finally, Praxis cannot fund any academic or training courses or theoretical learning classroom time. Um, this is truly for practical work experiences to get some, some experience in a, in a chosen field. So I'm gonna take you through sort of a visual timeline of how this all works. Um, but step one uh, to the process is you need to have an internship secured before you're able to submit a, a Praxis application. Um, I'll talk a little bit later about the application, but you can certainly get started in an application before you actually know what your internship is. Um, you just have to make sure you save your progress and return to it once you once you know those details of, of your application of your internship. So first, um, first step in the process when you get that internship, you're going to um, find a, the link to the application on our website. Um, and start filling out your section. There's a, there's a student section that asks for all of your details, your major, um, information about your internship. Um, there's a written statement section, which asks you some open-ended questions about your internship and your learning goals. Um, we ask you to provide contact information for your supervisor and your faculty advisor, and possibly your concentration director if you're applying for Praxis Plus. Um, once you submit your piece of the application, our application system sends out unique forms directly to those, those um, supporting uh, folks. So your supervisor and your faculty advisor will receive forms. I'll go over those forms a little bit more in a minute. Um, but all those forms need to be submitted and be received back in our system for your application to be considered complete and ready for review. Um, so once it's complete, we get an, an uh, alert on our end and we would go in and read read through all of your uh, responses, make sure everything lines up with the, the requirements for Praxis funding. Um, and a quick note here, if we ever have any questions or concerns or if anything doesn't look quite right on the application, we'll absolutely be in touch with you or your supervisor to try to work it out to make sure that we can get you funding. Um, we're on your side, we wanna, we wanna make sure you, you get through to that final piece of being able to be funded for this internship. Um, we'll do everything we can to get it to, to fit into the qualifications. Um, so once you are approved, you'll receive an email from our office uh, with, a, with a congratulations and a few next steps, um, and you'll receive that first stipend uh, within about one to two weeks after you receive the approval email. Um, so we give you the bulk of the stipend, all but $200 um, upon approval. Um, we really recommend you have direct deposits set up at time of application. To, uh, that's the fastest way to get your, your first payment. Um, so you'll see either 3,300 or 4,300 appear in your, your bank account pretty quickly after approval. And then the next part is the fun part. You go out and you do your internship 
Um, we really stress that you stay in touch with the Lazarus Center. Um, we are here all summer long to support you through the whole internship. Um, we'll check in with you by email um, at, through your Smith email throughout the summer uh, in case you have any questions or concerns. Um, but but this is where you go and, and, and learn about uh, the chosen field. And then after you're done your internship, uh, we need to receive two items in our office um, by August 31st. One is an internship report, and that will be emailed to you a couple weeks before the end of your internship. And it just sort of asks you, how did it go? And asks you some open-ended questions about your internship. And then the other piece will be sent directly to your supervisor that you listed on your application, um, a very brief form for them to confirm that you completed at least 220 hours. And it also provides them with a space to um, give us some comments about how you did. Um, and both of those items need to be received in our office by August 31st. Once we receive them, you, you will be issued that final $200 stipend and your, app, your record will be considered complete in our system. We also really recommend that you check out one of our internship reflection workshops that we offer throughout the fall um, to really kind of unpack uh, what happened during the summer and think about the kind of skills you gained and, and what you learned about yourself. Um, more info on that to follow, but um, keep an eye out for our internship reflection workshops as well. So this pretty much covers Praxis. I'm gonna move right into internship credit, which is um, through the same application system, which is why this is all in one, in one place. Um, you may have heard this referred to as IDP 117. Uh, that is the name of the course code that appears on your transcript if you, if you get uh, credit for your internship. But just some general overview for, um, for reference. So just to be really clear, this is not a huge piece of credit. This is not a full course. This is a sliver of credit, a quarter credit for your, your summer internship experience. Um, so there's three groups of people who, uh, groups of students who tend to use the, this uh, resource. Uh, first, sometimes an internship site just simply requires that interns are receiving credit from their um, college or university in order to participate in the internship. Um, other students just want to document their summer internship experience for whatever reason, and they want it to appear on their transcript. Um, but I'd say the, the uh, biggest group of students who use this resource are international students who need credit as part of uh, the curricular justification that they're listing on their CPT application. The um, qu qualifying factors are really similar to Praxis, but there are some notable differences. Um, for credit, um, first year sophomores and juniors are eligible. Again, we can't grant credit to students who have graduated, um, but, it, but credit may be used three times during your time at Smith, so you could use it every summer. Um, the internship, the qualifying internship requirements are really similar to Praxis, um, but if you apply for credit only, uh, you only have to do 100 hours of internship. Um, but in contrast to Praxis, um, anyone uh, doing an internship for credit, uh, must that internship must relate to your major, your minor, or your concentration. Um, and if you're an international student um, using this um, for your CPT curricular justification, your internship needs to relate to your major. Um, and that's really important a part of this process. Um, so just to clarify that um, an internship for credit may be paid or unpaid. So on our application system, you may select credit only as what, you, as, uh, what you're hoping to receive this summer or practice with credit if you need to receive funding for an unpaid internship and receive credit for that internship as well. We'll go over that a little bit more too. Um, but international students, we really recommend you um, meet with ISSO regarding all these CPT requirements. We work closely with that office to make sure that students are filling out everything correctly and, and, and um, receiving credit if they need it. Um, but essentially your approved application enrolls you in IDP 117. Um, and just to be very clear, this is not a course you need to attend and there's no tuition associated with this course. Um, it truly is just the, the course code so that it can appear on your transcript. Um, and again, I'll take you through this timeline of internship credit. Um, same, same deal, you have to have an internship offer before you actually can submit an application because we need to collect that supervisor information on the application. Um, again, it's, it's, uh, if, if you're applying for credit only, it's a pretty short application. Uh, there's still that student section um, to give us information about you and your internship. The system's going to shoot those forms directly to your supervisor and your faculty advisor um, for their um, uh, supportive sign-offs. Um, that stuff is, is received back in your record in, in our system. We are alerted that your application is then complete, so we would move forward with approval. Um, and same deal as Praxis, if there's anything that's concerning, we would absolutely reach out to you or your supervisor to make sure that everything is in place before we move ahead. 
Um, but your approval for internship credit is what um, we will register you for IDP 117 at that point. Um, so you don't have to worry about doing any of that through the registrar's office. Um, and then a little bit different than Praxis, um, during your internship, we, we ask that you maintain a journal. Um, again, we give you those journal prompts. Um, you don't have to guess what this needs to be, but we will send you those journal prompts. And we really suggest you maintain that journal because at the end of a, of a credit bearing internship, you're required to submit something called a final reflective essay. And that's sort of what you, gets you the credit for this internship. So check out those journal, um, journal prompts, uh, keep track of them throughout the summer. At the end of your uh, credit bearing internship, you're required to submit that essay. Again, we'll, we'll provide you with that form at the end of the summer, um, but your essay is actually sent directly to your faculty advisor and they are who determines pass fail for credit. So we need to get that final reflective essay in our office. We also need to get one of those supervisor verification forms to, to verify that you've completed your internship. Um, we need to get those both by August 31st. And then we go ahead and um, send a registrar the list of students who are receiving credit for their summer internships and it will it will appear on your fall transcript under IDP 117. So as you might imagine um, applying for Praxis with credit is sort of a combination of these two things um, but, uh, in terms of requirements. So to talk a little bit about our application system, um, all of the, these um, offerings are all through the same application system which is why we call it the application for internship support um, but you'll you'll find on the very first screen that you will be choosing what type of application um, you're submitting. Um, and this is a really important piece of the process because the application is different um, and there's different requirements based on what type of application you are submitting. Um, so be really careful with what you select here. If you don't know, you can always pause and email us and get some help on this. Um, but essentially, if you're applying for Praxis or Praxis Plus, remember that's that second Praxis stipend for students in the concentrations. Praxis or Praxis Plus is truly just funding only. You may also opt um, for Praxis combined with credit or Praxis Plus combined with credit if you need both the funding and the credit. Um, and then there's some students who have a paid internship, but they need to receive credit for that paid internship. So they apply for credit only. So these are all the options you'll see when you, when you log into that um, application system. Um, here are the some of the forms to anticipate uh, going into this application. Um, I've talked about some of these a little, a little bit already, but just to make sure you're clear on what all this means, when you submit your portion of the application, these forms are automatically sent to the people who need to fill them out. Um, when all the forms are submitted to our system, that's when your application is considered complete and we can begin that review and approval process. Um, but the first one, that supervisor confirmation form, any type of application requires this. Um, this is sent right to your supervisor and, it, and it ask them to confirm that you have an internship offer and ask them to describe a bit more uh, details about your internship duties and your supervision you'll be receiving during the summer. Another uh, form that's required is a faculty advisor sign off form. This is again required for all application types, um, but this uh, confirms that you've communicated with you and your you and your advisor have communicated about your internship plans. Um, so for first years who don't have a major advisor yet, we uh, prompt you to enter your liberal arts advisor in that field instead. The written statement section is not formed, but it's it's just part of the application itself. It's sort of text fields within the application. Um, and this is required for any um, Praxis application. So Praxis, Praxis Plus, or Praxis with credit. And this is a really important piece because your responses help us evaluate whether or not your internship qualifies for Praxis funding. Um, there are minimum word count requirements. Please pay attention to those. Um, we really need to see that you have a really good understanding of your internship um, and that you can provide lots of information to us uh, so that we can evaluate it for, for whether or not it qualifies. Um, my, my advice for those written statements is usually to over explain. Um, the, re the requirement is 300 words. So to hit those 300 words, I recommend you explain um, as if the person you're talking to knows nothing about the field or the type of work you're gonna be doing. Um, that usually helps get to that, to that requirement. Um, that next one, a concentration director form, that's the, the form that's only required for students applying for Praxis Plus, the second um, Praxis stipend in support of concentrations. Um, and this will only appear if, you're, if you select Praxis Plus on your application. Um, and this is sent directly to your concentration director because they ultimately are who um, confirms your eligibility for Praxis funding or Praxis Plus funding. Um, 
And then finally, um, the international travel registry um, is another requirement that may come up on your application. Um, as soon as the system sees that you are traveling outside of the United States, it's going to prompt um, you to fill out a, a mandatory travel registry through the Lewis Global Studies site. Um, and it will also add this as a checklist item on, on what needs to be done in your application. Um, so this is truly for any student traveling outside of the United States um, on a Smith-sponsored trip, and that is what Praxis is considered. Um, we're happy to answer any questions about that going forward if you need it. Finally, um, applications are uh, reviewed and approved and funded as they're submitted. So if you submit, if your application is complete in April, you will receive your funding likely in April. Uh, but the deadline to commit it, um, to submit a complete application is June 9th, 2023. Um, and that means all components, in including those supporting forms, need to be received by the deadline. Um, so it's important that you keep track of your little checklist um, which will be provided for you. Um, keep track of your checklist and make sure you follow up with your supervisor or your faculty advisor to make sure they get their forms in on time as well. Um, and just to make sure you know you have support throughout this whole process, I want to remind you of different ways you can connect with the Lazarus Center in this process. Um, you can meet with a Lazarus Center advisor no matter where you are um, in looking for internships, planning on applying for Praxis. Um, you visit Handshake and you click on Career Center in the top right corner and then select Appointments. And here's where you can select a different uh, appointment type depending on what you need. Uh, we have an option for general advising and that's really good for students who are just beginning their internship search. Um, you can get some really great resources on where to look and how to look. Um, if you're at the interview stage and you want a little interview practice, you may select appointment type mock interview. I think it's actually changed to practice interview now, um, but that's a really good low pressure way to, to practice your interview skills before you actually have to go do the real thing for your internship. Um, and if you have some specific questions about Praxis or internships for credit, you can select that um, application type at, or that appointment type and that will, that will uh, book you an appointment with me directly. Um, and I'm happy to answer questions um, about your uh, proposed internship. And of course we have um, email uh, dedicated to both of these programs, praxis at smith.edu or internship credit at smith.edu. Um, with any questions you may have in the meantime. So I think that's it. Um, again, my name is Emily Beaudry. Please um, email me or email Praxis or Internship Credit if you have any more questions. Thank you.